often in the stock market in the world, you'll see adjustments at this time of year. Um, in, in Jewish, this is Jewish history, not Bible history. So uh, in, in the Jewish concept, there's a time when God weighs the world and measures the world and adjusts it. And that's the time that we're, that we're coming into in Jewish history, um, which is very connected again to what we're praying about with her teaching on prayer because somebody standing in the gap can change the measurements. Um, God has this thing called we're to be light and salt. So we're both to be light, but lots of times, like right now, I believe real Christians are being salt. You look and sometimes you can get overwhelmed by what you see in the world, and that's because you're not supposed to be looking at the world. And if you look at the world, you're gonna be overwhelmed. So you're supposed to look above the world and therefore, then you can slow things down. So a lot of what God does is slow things down. So often, not always, but often I'll just pray in the spirit at the earlier part in the service when the folks are ministering. And um, I'll just kind of, now I don't leave my body, so it's not astral projection. I just look, I just, as it were, through the spirit, I just kind of look over things. And if the Lord shows me something specific about to pray for somebody, then I'll pray for it because the truth is, once you come in here, this is our town. Say our town. And whatever spirit we allow in this church, people can come into our spirit. Um, If you go to people that cook real spicy food and you walk into their house, that's their town. And you walk into their house and they're used to their smells and you walk into their town and you're not used to their smells and it's a different authority because they're allowed to smell that way because that's what they're cooking. Amen. Anybody ever come home and thought, what is that? And found out it was cabbage or, or cauliflower or broccoli. Okay. I'm okay with broccoli. I really like cauliflower. Cabbage, I don't mind, um, but I don't cook cabbage, but I will cook cauliflower and um, but it's amazing that you walk into that house and you think whose cat died you know and because that's your town you know you're so we create a smell an atmosphere based on um, who we are as I said this morning um, Jesus is responsible for his church he's left the Holy Spirit on the earth in charge, but he hasn't left being in charge because he's the head of the church. So if he's the head of the church, he couldn't have left being in charge. However, he left the whole, left, put the Holy Spirit is on the earth. He is not on the earth. The Holy Spirit is on the earth. And the Holy Spirit's plan is to perfect us um, so that we become more like Jesus. Now, that sounds nice. Doesn't that sound nice? More like Jesus, amen? More like Jesus. But see, in a religious way, we say, well, that would really nice to be more like Jesus. Well, whenever you say that, I'd like you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because Jesus is not who everybody thinks Jesus is. Jesus is a very strong person who corrected people he loved, put them in situations to try and prepare them for his plan for the planet. And, and so he's going to do the same thing. So like Christians generally want uh, me with a touch of whipped cream called Jesus on top. Okay? And, and Jesus isn't interested in being your whipped cream. He's interested in stirring you up and transforming your um, thinking so that you become more like Jesus. Um, Again, I like Pastor Billy is so great because he's here again trying to teach us. And then he says, this is why I love him because he's very humble. People don't realize how humble he is because see, when you have to minister in authority, you're ministering authority over something. But if you hear what somebody says and how they deal with things, then you can tell whether they're humble or not. And at the same time, when he's pushing and encouraging us to push, He's realizing God is speaking to him to do the same thing. 
And so as I was sitting there tonight, kind of just looking over things in the spirit, I, I began to see nations and uh, which I don't know when the last time I would have ever seen that, if ever, I can't remember. And, and I saw the shifting of nations. So that's why I wanted to spend a little more time praying in the spirit because it was God going to show me. See if he, so sometimes the Lord will begin to show you something. If you ignore it, he'll show it to somebody else. And sometimes you, you see, it's just not TV. Okay, it's more like TV in the 50s. Was anybody around TV in the 50s? That there was a channel called Toronto and Buffalo. And if the wind was right and the antenna was right, you got to see Buffalo in snow. Not meaning literal snow. You got to meet, see Buffalo and then you held it just as close as you could so you could get through the TV show because you did not want to see checks. So you would put up with buffalo with snow versus clear checks that if they paid a dollar for any of those programs, they paid too much. Okay. And um, so in the spirit, there's no difference because that's what Sunday night's about, trying to teach people because God's calling you to be effective warriors. Um, now, if you get too caught up in that, you can get off track. That's why you want to be around people that know something. And so when I was seeing that, I just wanted to wait to see if the Lord was showing me something. But I believe it's connected to this time of year that things are happening. And we know things are happening in the world. Um, you're not going to get the best news from the news. Okay. Because... The news is paid for. In Canada, we have a total government news organization called CBC. And you say, why do I say, I'm not against them. I'm just saying, if I could be paid for, if I could get good money from the government, a lot of money from the government, I'd take it too, right? And so they take, and then whoever pays you the most, you might talk against them the least, I'm just talking about practicality. I mean, if your boss pays you a lot, you might not want to talk bad about your boss. Hello? So if you are going to the media, that I don't think the media was ever pure, by the way. I don't think it ever was. I think it's a different spirit now in the media, different nations, different, because see, there's an agenda. And I shared this a few weeks ago. I didn't finish the story, but how they got all the ladies to smoke. So in the 30s, they, the, a marketing man said to all the starlets in Hollywood, why don't you have a strike for women's freedom? And you can, because it was, women did smoke, but very behind, it was considered very unladylike to smoke. And, and so all these Hollywood starlets walked down Hollywood Boulevard puffing away. And it was front page news See, news, I'm talking about the newspapers, all around the world. And the sales of cigarettes shot up enormously because all of a sudden a large group of people that maybe, I don't know, because women definitely smoke for different reasons than men. I don't quite know. I think this, a lot of it's to stay thinner and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not going to get into that. But all of a sudden sales went through the roof. And that guy didn't spend one dollar on advertising. And I forget how much money he received. He received a gigantic check from the cigarette company because all the media, now you can't blame them, they were reporting the news. But see what it was, this, these were torches for freedom. You too can die of cancer, ladies. Don't just leave it to the men, right? And I'm not against... I am, I'm, not, I'm for your good health, but we're not teaching about cigarettes tonight. We're talking about manipulation. So see, if you want to hear what the Spirit's saying, you can't listen to the news media. Because I'm going to inform you, the news media is not telling you what the Spirit's saying. So when I was seeing that, I was thinking, now, Lord, are you trying to show me something? Or is there something we're supposed to do here tonight? And I don't think we missed it. I wasn't expecting to see it. See, that's what shocked me. Just like Pastor Linda, she wasn't expecting to see what she saw. 
And we don't encourage regular folks in our church. We honor you. And if you felt you had a strong word, you come and speak to a leader because we don't mind wherever you are prophesying and speaking out, but we don't just let one everybody up to grab the mic because I can't always guarantee what someone's going to say when they get on the mic. So in a smaller group like this, we'll say, come on up. But see, Pastor Linda being a leader in the church, she came and took the mic and, and she began to say that. And I personally believe that there was an urgency in the spirit for that. Why? Because I talked about it three different times through the service. If that person, I don't know whether you knew whether it was a male or female, I, I don't know, not really. The whole point is that could be a life-changing moment for that person. But most of the time Christians aren't aware of how important a decision they're making sometimes. And I think that's why I think it kept coming back to me was not to convince that person. Because see, that person didn't need convincing. They needed to make a decision. And we couldn't pray enough to get them to make the right decision. So all you're doing is praying for people to be able to make a decision. That the devil doesn't deceive them. And that's again back to the media where the media has its agenda and it's to call sell cornflakes. Okay? And it's to sell gidgets and widgets. And I, I mean, you know, I love them. Um, the gidgets and widgets. So uh, if you know the stories of how Kellogg's and Post began, they were both crooked people. It's wonderful if you went back, both made a lot of money, Post, that's why they're both in the same town. And um, one found he could make money by telling people they could be cured of cancer and they would come and he would say, but you can't eat meat and you can't do this, but you must eat this. Then whichever one was, one was Kellogg's and one was Post, the other guy came to town, went to the other end and said, no, I got the cure for cancer and the cure for cancer is you get to eat meat, but you don't eat this. And they both began to give grains and all of a sudden they realized there was a whole lot of money in grains and it was up until the 50s before the government told Post and Kellogg's that they couldn't say that Kellogg's cornflakes helped you from cancer. See, now, I don't know how they would fight that and who cares, I'm not talking about them, but I'm, all I'm saying is, what do you mean my, my little cereal every morning was started by a crook? Yeah, but it still tastes good, you know, I mean, and, and then when it didn't taste good, we just threw a pile of sugar on it and when that didn't taste good, we threw in some Lucky Charms in there and I mean, I'll still buy Lucky Charms if I'm having a bad day. I just eat the charms and throw away the Lucky, you know, just because they taste really, really good. So what, what am I getting at? See, that's the natural. And we're only going to get a glimpse over there, over here in the supernatural. God could just tell you what he's up to. And so we're coming into this time of, uh, I forget how many days, is it 14? I didn't look into it because I wasn't planning on talking about it. But this is the time stock markets often and there's a couple of reasons because a lot of jewish businessmen um go on holidays and they run a lot of money so sometimes they pull their money out because they'll also know this is a time when um things change and uh, why, why am i saying all that because i was saying lord are you telling me something here so i needed you to stand with me and i appreciate you did i believe if he wanted to tell me more I would have had more. You wouldn't get more. Maybe you'll go home in the middle of the night and the, you'll say, oh, I see what pastor was talking about. And the Lord may just have you in your seat. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you that if, if you hear from the spirit of the Lord, you'll do way more than you ever think you can. Because it's the spirit of the Lord. He, that he's in charge of the church on the planet. So um, I don't think if there's any parents here and you're taking your kids to non-government schools, um, then we talked about, we're not gonna show you the video, but we have, we're gonna show that video once a month because we're not handing out any money until December, but we wanted to encourage parents with kids that, that are in either homeschooling or um, our um, Christian schooling or Montessori schooling or what's another one I was thinking of? There was another school I was thinking of that, um, you know, was there another one? Anyway, any kind of school that's not government school, okay? 
Uh, now, if it's satanic, we're going to have to go to the deacons and get a second because <laughs> we don't necessarily want to do that. So I, I'm going to take you to the book of Ezekiel right now. I'm not going to make you go there. I'm just going to read what we've been talking about on and on and on because see, why am I teaching this? I'm teaching this so the Lord can teach your hands, your spiritual hands. He puts spiritual weapons in your hands and he is trying to tell you that you are powerful. So here we have again the three prophets I've talked about in Ezekiel because Israel was so far gone that he said if Job, now I want to stop with Job. I, I, every now and then I'll teach on Job and I always ask the Lord, it's really interesting when I teach on Job, nobody seems to get Job. So I don't know whether it's because Christians have such a religious thought of Job, but the Bible says, first of all, Job, I personally believe the reason the book of Job is there and he's not Jewish, Job wasn't Jewish, um, is I believe he's the most righteous person that ever lived on the planet next to Jesus. Now, I'm not saying for sure he is, but if you ever want to have something interesting, you read the book of Job and you find out what he did in his life and how he took care of all the poor and how he did all of those things. And you, and you read it. When I read it, I kept saying, there's no way anybody could do this. He must be telling a lie. There's no way anybody could could be this generous. There's, he, and I kept saying, Lord, and yet when you come to the end, you'll find that God didn't correct Job for any of the things. God didn't say, you're lying, Job. All God did later, when Job began to talk about things, here's all God said. Who do you think you are? And he says, where were you when I took a grain of sand and measured the worlds? In other words, whatever we think we are, God was saying to Job, who was, see, it would be different if he was an unrighteous man, then who do you think you are? But if you read the book of Job, you're going to see he, what he did was almost unbelievable. I honestly still to this day don't know how any person can do that much and live that righteously. And so the whole point of Job is God out there to punish you. No, it means that just because you're righteous doesn't mean you don't get attacked. And Sometimes, if you're really righteous, you get attacked. Hello? So we find a lot of people. Uh, and so this, this scripture here is Job, Noah. I think we all know about Noah, right? That's a lot of work for 100 years, but it was worth it on the day they shut the, on the day the taps were turned on. And, and for those that are new to the word of God, the word of God says there was no rain until Joe, uh, until Noah. So what they, had, they didn't even have a concept. So when they felt the rain falling, this was something they'd never felt. It was, the Bible says that when God created the heaven and the earth, he created an atmosphere. It's called firmament. And it says there was water above the firmament and there was water beneath the firmament. And... It doesn't say that so much rain fell in 40 days that it flooded the earth. It said that the rain fell for 40 days, but then the, it says that the, um, um, it, the word is in oceans, but it said that the earth opened up and the water that was under the earth began to come up. So the flooding of the earth wasn't just from 40 days of rain. It was because the 40 days of rain and then the water coming up and then the whole world got shifted and Noah was out there uh, in the ark with, with all these things. So we, I just said that about Job so you know Job was a pretty good guy. Amen? Can you say amen with me? Now, Noah was a pretty good guy. Amen? In terms of what God said. God said he was righteous. God didn't talk much about his family. Um, I mean, he talked about him. Then Daniel. We all like Daniel. Daniel's one of the guys in the Bible you like. You know why you like Daniel? Because you heard about him when you were a kid. And he, he's always a winner. And Daniel is, is a courageous guy. So we like him. And uh, so why am I saying that? So there's a time when God says judgment must come to get things back in order. So see, if there's an adjustment, like I believe there is as of January 1st, when the Lord spoke to me in, back in December and said, January 1st, this is my year, 2023. This is my year. Now, God has every year but that things were going to happen. On January 2nd, again, the, the North American world was shocked 
when the football player falls over on the field, thousands saw him die in front of their eyes. It so shocked all the media people that they began to pray and talk about God. That was day two. I think it was the second day of January. Then we had the Asbury Revival, which is still multiplying. I'm believing for Canada. I'm believing for Trent. We're, not, we're seeing good things in this area. We're not seeing the kind of things, but things are out many places in the States. Things are breaking out, okay? Uh, so we can have it here, but we have to call it here. If, see, that's what prayer is about. Prayer is about where you go in and you wrestle for things and you call those things that be not as though they were. So, so these three guys and then Daniel, we know about Daniel. So that is the extreme that God is saying, if these three people were here praying, but the reason he's teaching that is because normally you don't need three people. Normally you only need one. Abraham interceded for Sodom, and he got it down from 50 righteous people, I think down to five. Abraham interceded. See, if, you're, if I can break you out of your Christian thinking, then you're going to think, well, I'm just on this ride, and we'll just pray for a little help from God to get through it. And that's how most Christians think, where God is trying to say, I'm teaching you how to change history. I'm telling you how you can create things that weren't there. And so a lot of people look at revivals and they say, wasn't that a great revival? But that's the after effect of somebody who's been believing God and praying God. And we never know who it is. We do know Evan Roberts prayed a lot in the Welsh revival, but I don't know that he's the real prayer. We don't know. One day we'll find out. It, it could have been grandma in the back room somewhere praying. So this scripture is telling us that lots of times one person standing in the gap can stop something. In this case, he's saying, no, these guys have gone so far, we're not, you're not going to be able to stop it. But the fact that he's telling us you're not going to be ex able to stop it is the exception to the rule versus the, the rule. This is the exception to the rule. The rule is that you can stop things. Come on, say it with me. I can stop things. Now, that's why even tonight, whether this was an illustration the Lord planned, that I was saying, well, Lord, are you showing me something that we're to intercede against? Because we can change this into a prayer meeting. We can stand here and intercede because we don't know. Uh, folks, like we're not that far in the natural from uh, things that are happening right now in this world. We're not that far from a nuclear war. We're not that far. Now, I don't think it'll be a nuclear war. I believe there'll just might be one explosion to frighten the world. Now, I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm just saying that might be worthwhile our praying. It might be worthwhile our believing because you, you have a guy who has the largest nuclear, I think he's got three times as many nuclear warheads, some of them way more modern but who cares whether it's an old car or a new car? You know what I mean? As long as it'll blow everybody up. So there's what's called strategic nuclear attacks. And the, it would be to kill people, but it would be to scare the world because the world is afraid, especially if something went off like that. So that means the Holy Spirit could ask me or you to stand in the gap and believe God that something gets stopped 